wear East Coast versus West Coast. We're not talking graphics. We don't have to worry about any game violence. We're talking about legalities. Riparian right is a form of water uh, resource deviation. What's the word I'm looking for? This is how we figure out how it was done in the East Coast. Uh, it's based on English and Roman tradition. Essentially, when you buy a piece of property in the East Coast, you own everything above and below. So uh, you can put in a well in your property, no problem. You have the right to do that. Uh, you have the right to receive water at undiminished quality or quantity. I'm talking about riparian right. I'm thinking you will too, sorry. So with riparian right, I'm talking about rivers, not rivers. Riparian right says if you live on a river, you have the right to have clean water. And this is the basis on which we are suing uh, North Carolina. I'd say we being South Carolina. Because we have the right to undiminished quality or quantity and taking out 25 million gallons of days, it will, 25 of the original gas, it would definitely diminish our quantity. And this gets, just jumping here real quick, the other thing that makes this case so complicated is that, you know, this quantity does not stay the same over time. Right? I mean, based on drought, now we a lot, a little. And it's primarily right now in the drought years is the basis for South Carolina's lawsuit. Right now, they can take out 10 million gallons a day today out of the top work, and it's not going to have any impact. We'll give them 25. They got 25 today, that's right? Not a big deal. But, you know, a year and a half ago, if they took 10 million gallons out, that would a big deal, right? And so we're concerned about that both in terms of weather effects, right? Those can factor in these lawsuits. And also protecting future population growth and future needs. Sometimes you're suing part of South Carolina's lawsuit is to protect our future ability to grow. Right? So that factors into these lawsuits as well. You want to make sure that it might be okay today, but what about 20 years from now? Right? Once you set that legal precedent, it's going to be hard to get that water back. Right? So you want to protect also how that water might change in the future. I see Joey saying they got to get ready to push the shot. Okay, we're almost done because we talked for a little bit. So we've got to sometimes shut us up. She's going to get a chef who's going to start pulling people off. <laughs> the flip side of riparian right is the obligation not to degrade a natural resource. So the flip side of that is if you pollute and you are taking away somebody else's right, and you can uh, have legal action taken against you for that. Prior appropriation in the Western United States because the Western United States again are drier. They've had this, the problem that we're having now, they had it from the beginning. It's appropriated through the actual consent of use of water. It's on a first come, first serve basis. So if you've had a farm in Nevada making, I don't know, growing tobacco for 50 years, and you're taking 100 million gallons a day out, it's unreasonable, I know. You're taking a large portion of water out, that's your right to do that because you've been there first. And then somebody comes in to grow, I don't know, something. They don't have the right to take it because you've already taken that right. The only challenge is the public trust doctrine. And the case law for that is National Audubon Society versus Superior Court by Mono Lake. Don't have time to go over the whole thing. Basically, what happened, uh, Mono Lake was drained because of prior appropriation. And when that happened, the uh, islands, or what was once islands, became peninsulas. Brackish water decreased, and the, it's, it's a huge uh, waterfowl breeding area. But the coyotes were then able to raid the nests of the, the birds, and the bird population was decimated. And they sued using the National Audubon Society, they sued Superior Court based on the public trust doctrine, saying this is a natural resource, you're destroying it. Um, long story short, you need to look it up. It's a case study, but. Uh, National Audit Society, all that people, and etc. The other way, is, uh, one case has been challenged by Native Americans based on prior treaty rights. Right. Yeah. English rule based on land ownership. That's what we were uh, talking about earlier. You have to write everything above and below. Georgia, Connecticut, and Mississippi are the only states that use English rule. The Eastern United States, as far as groundwater use is concerned, uses American rule. We recognize the interrelationship between individual withdrawal and regional water supply, and we allow for reasonable use. 
and that's controlled at a state level. But again, that can run into problems if you have a shared aquifer. And we are only uh, five minutes over. Sure, we can. Um, basically, um, if you look through the look through the uh, objectives for um, the special topic, you'll see that uh, Josh and I, when we wrote that scenario, we realized that the, the, um, three or four times they talk about managing water, coming up with a management plan, etc. So that we decided that. More, we didn't talk much about that here. We put all that into the, into the, into the um, special topic, to the uh, presentation. So basically, that's what your students are going to be tasked to do. Right? They, the scenario there is that um, they're working for a local government. And basically, the local government, similar to what we had in South Carolina, has had some drought years, has brought the issue of water supply to the floor. Right? And so they're tasked with um, creating a management plan for their watershed. And what they ask them to do is to balance several different needs there. So uh, they include some of the stuff we talked about here, power generation, uh, residential use, industrial use, and also to tie it into some of the other topics like the wildlife and forest green stuff, uh, the ecosystem integrity and that sort of thing, and wildlife protection. And we ask them to pay attention to uh, a couple of other things as well, again, potential for drought and um, tying into that how climate change might affect the future population growth, what we just touched on here. And that's the, that's the scenario in a nutshell. And there's plenty of information out there. Just about every municipality should have something. Uh, their larger municipalities are having uh, MS4, Municipal Combined Storm Sewer Systems. Elements of those plans would work very well here. So there is a plethora of information. And the harder thing is probably going to be finding all the information and then weeding out exactly what they think is best for their plan. And the game, the thing to focus on there is it's not really a right or a wrong plan. The thing that your students should focus on is, is how strongly they can justify making the decisions that they decide to make, right? Why, why do you need, you know, um, and I think about it, like, we're going to set aside, get so much from surface water, so much from groundwater. I think in the scenario we say they get 50-50, half from each, right? So how are you going to manage those two things? Um, how much are you going to increase your water supply by decreasing use? Right? Um, and those sorts of things, and justifying it. I can do that. And bear in mind that each of you come from a different region, so different regions are going to have different correct, but not correct, but different, better answers. Because it's really based on your area. Make more sure you appreciate it. Do you have any questions for us on that? Or, or the special topic? Or about life in general? <laughs> we'll meet you again. It may not be a good one. We'll meet you again. Thank you so much. Very, very important.